Hello again, everybody. I'm Clay from Lake Charles Toyota. <laughs> and I'm Joey. <laughs> you forgot your last name. You forgot your last name. <laughs> I was debating whether to say it or not. Okay, okay. I decided we, not to. We're in a 2015 Camry XSE V6. Not necessarily the point, it's a V6. But Clay and I both get questions, and even the customer relations manager in service, always get questions about Bluetooth. My Bluetooth's not working, or someone messed with my phone or my car, and now I can't get my music to work, or any of those kind of questions. We want to answer all those questions here in a simple video. So, for starters, I just want to explain that this is the new head unit, so the same concept should apply to every single 2015 Camry, I mean, every 2015 Toyota, except the new Prius. It's the only one with the old system. But everything else will be exactly the same. So, and you'll look on your head unit, you have at least, you have this phone button. It'll either be right here in the corner, it'll be here on the bottom set of the buttons, or somewhere different. Because this one has navigation, it's up here. Now you do have this set of buttons here, which is like a pick up or hang up button. And pressing the pick up or that phone button on the side does the exact same concept. So I'll press that button, and it tells me there's no phones that have been added. <laughs> you want to add one now. You hit yes. And so it's actually already searching for a Bluetooth device. So you go to your either iPhone or Android, go to your settings, turn your Bluetooth on, and iPhone's going to start searching for the car, and it already found it because you see where it says Toyota Camry, and it says not paired. So you hit where it says Toyota Camry, it starts swirling, and we look back, and then it confirms that you want to request the pair, and you hit pair. Look back on the screen, it tells you that it was successful. Now, there's a text messaging feature that is going to ask, it's going to ask your permission for on the head unit of the car. I, I have had people ask. How do you turn the text, messaging, turn the text on? messaging on? Right. On an Android, it'll ask, it'll, you'll have a pop-up on your phone you'll saying, have, do you want to give it permission to access your messaging? And on the Android, you actually will have two different messages pop up and say, do you want to give the, this permission to pull your contacts and call history as well? On the Android, you'd hit don't ask again and OK, and you'd hit it again for the messaging. But for iPhone, what you're going to do is you hit the little blue information button after it's been connected. And see where it says show notifications and that it, that has not been turned on? You then turn it on and that's all you have to do. Now every time I get a text message, it'll pop up on the touch screen. Now I'm done with my phone now. So, my phone's connected. My music and my call history, everything's being uploaded. Right now it's blank because it's I have a lot of call history. I mean, it's like contacts. a computer, you know, it has to take its time and load everything. Right. You know, it's not going to be absolutely instantaneous. Like the uh, voice command feature that uses a lot of the phone's features, sometimes it'll say that it's not initialized yet. It's, absolutely. It just has to take a little bit for the computer to basically turn on, let the software run, and then you can do whatever you have to do. Right. Now, I don't know if you saw what I was doing while I was going back and forth. I'm actually using the four-way directional buttons on the steering wheel. This is something that no other manufacturer except... Forward. Well, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry, but this is actually it makes it a little bit easier to use this four-way directional because as you can see back on the screen, I can go side to side and actually goes through the columns. I can scroll down and choose what I want to choose, and hit OK, hit the middle button, and then if I want to call that for call that person, hit the center button to confirm it again. That's all I have to do. And at the bottom, you see it has a little back arrow on the touch on the steering wheel, and that looks just like the one at the top corner of the touch screen. I press that button. It goes back. It's just like a back button on a uh, browser. Basically, use it like you did in a remote before you had touch screen. <laughs> the four-way controls. Now, to the troubleshooting and problems. So let's say I'll, someone else wants to add their phone because your kid or your friend, they want to play their music or whatever. So they go to the settings, and they go to the Bluetooth, and they want to add theirs. So you see at the bottom, you have the choice of remove or add. Let's say I want to add mine. It's going to ask you, all other devices must be disconnected before adding a new device. Do you want to continue? They're going to hit yes because they just want to add their music. So your phone is now disconnected. And now it is searching for a new phone and a new audio player, however you want to, whatever you want to add to it. So they add theirs. Well, they, they think they're deleting their phone. They accidentally delete. Because see, this is actually my iPhone that's, sit here, that's saved in the car. They accidentally delete mine. So what usually would happen is the actual owner of the car gets back in and my phone's not working. Why isn't it working? Because you go to your Bluetooth and see that it's still on and it still has Toyota Camry saved. Oh, excuse me. 
so you don't know why it's not working. Because it was deleted from the car, it's not going to pick it up. And when you try to hit add, it's not going to search for what's already been saved. So in order for you to, to connect the phone back, you have to go to hit the little blue information button, forget device, and it's going to ask you to confirm that. So now it's like it's been cleared out. And so now it's going to tell you it's not been paired and to click on it and it connects it again. Now I did have a question from a customer in service um, a couple days ago. Sorry. She said that her daughter got in the car, mm -hmm. hooked her phone up, mm -hmm. and then now hers just didn't connect anymore. Mm -hmm. Now on the system, mm -hmm. her phone wasn't removed, the daughter's phone was there, and the driver's phone was there, and she said, well, I just can't get it to connect anymore. I can't get it to connect anymore. Did she delete it off her phone? She didn't delete it off her phone, but what happened is, is that generally the primary driver or, you know, if there's one phone in there, every time you get in, that phone's going to automatically connect. The system's going to search for that phone and do it without you having to press any buttons. But because the daughter activated her phone, mm -hmm. it stopped automatically searching for the the first phone. Okay. So really all she had to do was manually go in and tell it to connect. Right. Because she got in her car, it didn't connect and she kind of panicked a little bit. Right. So, and people do not forget if you're trying to do something while the vehicle's moving, it's not going to let you go to any of those settings. I had a lot of customers tell me, "Well, how do I do this? How do I do that?" and I walk them through it and they say, "Well, it's not working." I'm like, "Wait, are you driving?" I say, "Yeah, you can't be driving while you're doing this because it's a safety feature of Toyota that while you're moving, it doesn't want you trying to go through your settings and your setup. It wants you to be at a full stop. Not necessarily in part, but you have to be at a full stop. So that's a lot of the issues as well. You have to be at a full stop to do any of the settings. Yeah. Now, and also, if you look and see, it has a picture of a phone and a little picture of music. So if I click on where it says my iPhone, I can disconnect just the phone or I can disconnect just the audio player. So let's say in theory you have a Bluetooth earpiece device. So you only want it to be connected as a phone. I mean, as an audio player. You only want to play music through your car, but when you get a call, you want to go through your earpiece. That's exactly how you do it. Or if you have multiple devices, say you have uh, an iPod or something like that that has Bluetooth. You can do that? That'll actually work. You can connect the phone as one device and the audio player as a second device. Right, right. It's And that gets a little complicated for people sometimes, but it is possible. Yeah. But just know that it is possible to connect just as one or the other. I've had people whose phones are some, a little bit older and that they only connect as a phone and don't know what to do with the audio player feature or setting. So, and if you don't know what's going on, sometimes you have to go in separately and say, just connect as phone, disconnect as audio player, however mm -hmm. you want to do but it. But this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Right. To save a lot of stress, try not to separate into mm -hmm. two different devices. Keep it both connected as one. So like if you, like with Joey's phone, you wouldn't hit uh, connect all. And then it does it on its own. Right, now it's connected. Yeah. Now, mind you, if you have more than one phone in this system, only one phone is going to work at a time. Absolutely. Don't expect for, if you get a phone call from either phone, for it to go through the system. Right, it can't Only the phone connected is going to work. And in order to switch phones, mm -hmm. you go to the Bluetooth setup, which should be apps, setup, setup Bluetooth, and there will be multiple phones listed. Whatever right. phone you want to be active at the time, that has to be connected to. Right. So a lot of people kind of forget that that's what needs to be done. And then don't forget, every Toyota, it's going to have a USB and auxiliary port. Every new one, at least. So if you want to play your iPod or your iPad or whatever kind of audio device, you still have the manual cords you can use. You still obviously can do it wirelessly, but... If you're having complications, my best suggestion is just to do it through the wires. Which is why I go into the audio setting and go into your source. Which it, we actually posted a video before on the basic the 14 camera, how that worked. Mm -hmm. It's the same way. And you see how it's kind of darkened the auxiliary and USB. Whenever something is plugged in, that'll be active. So you can still have whatever phone is connected with the Bluetooth mm -hmm. can have their option. And anything that's plugged into the USB or the auxiliary will have their options. So in case you want more versatility to do whatever it is you really need to do that way, that's how you can make the adjustments. Right. right. I know this is a very, very long video, but anybody who ever has any questions about troubleshooting their phone, doesn't know how to connect their phone, whatever, 
that's why I made this video. Right. Now I do have one more thing I want to say about the Bluetooth system. Don't don't give me that smirk. Worst case scenario, if something is not working, you cannot figure it out. Delete the phone from the system. It's the best thing to do is you go to settings, connect where it says connect phone, remove. Remove everything from the system. And it's going to ask you again. You say yes. But don't forget, if you delete it from there, you want to go you back. You delete it from your phone as well. Because it's still going to sit there as a saved device. So you have the yep. blue, blue information button, remove, forget this device, and forget this device. And there's the same thing for Android as well. It's going to ask you to forget the device or unlearn it. However, I'm an Android person, so I don't know what they do. But it's going to, it's going to request that you delete it from it being saved. Just don't forget, yeah. if that ever happens, it's the best thing you can do is delete it, start over again, because it happens a lot. Because a lot of the issues will be resolved that way. Because maybe it was just someone pressed some button they weren't supposed to, and by deleting the phone and putting it in it and adding it back, right. they're able to give it a fresh start. Yep. So. And if anybody has any other questions, please just let us know, leave us comments or whatever. All right. Thanks for watching.